Hi, hi. So I was in Poland last week and I got really, really bored. So I decided to implement a beat tracking algorithm. A uh, beat tracking algorithm is an algorithm that can listen to music and tap its metaphorical foot along with the beat. Um, and so I did that and I put the code on GitHub and I put documentation on GitHub, but I wanted to make a supplementary video documentation because there are a lot of free parameters and some of them I think it's just easier if you can look at the signal and see how changing the parameter affects the signal. I guess you could say this is going to be something of a master class on beat tracking. So beat tracking algorithms kind of have three steps. Okay, there's onset detection, which is figuring out at which time new notes start in the music. Okay, there's tempo tracking, which is being able to say, okay, this piece is at 93 beats a minute. And then there's beat tracking, which is predicting a small amount of time in the future exactly what moment in time the beat is supposed to arrive. Okay, and um, so I think what I'm going to do is actually make three separate videos and cover each one of these in its own video, and so this video is going to be about onset detection. Okay, so over here I have a plot of how I'm doing onset detection. Uh, this is a well-known algorithm. It's sort of considered to be state-of-the-art at the moment. Uh, so this black line represents my onset signal. And you can see if I clap, I get a spike in that signal. Um, and if I play an actual piece of music, uh, this is a little bit of Adele. You can see that it's not nearly as pronounced as when I clap, but indeed that uh, that black line does spike when there are really sort of at least obvious percussive sounds in the music. Okay, and so what this black line actually is, is essentially the spectral flux of the signal. And the way you calculate that is you essentially you just take a windowed DFT of the audio signal. And in each window, uh, you're basically interested in those frequency bins where there's more energy than there was in the previous window. And so you just add up the amount of positive change or the amount of increase in all of the frequency bins. And that sort of becomes the next sample in your onset signal. And in principle, this doesn't just work for percussive sounds. Uh, this should work for sustained sounds as well. Um, because if you have one sustained note, then you kind of just have one spike in your Fourier transform. Um, and when you change to a new note, you get, you know, the old spike goes away and you get a new spike at a new frequency. And as that new spike is growing, you have positive change in that frequency bin, which should result in a high value in this black line. And then once the note is sustained, uh, there's no more increase in that frequency bin. Uh, so the black line over here, the onset signal just goes back to zero. So even for sustained sounds, in principle, this should spike at the beginning of a new note, okay, in principle. In theory, it works a lot better for percussive sounds. Uh, fortunately, I only need it for percussion sounds, so that's fine. Uh, so now I'd like to show you what some of the parameters are and what happens when you adjust them. Um, so first is there's a noise cancellation threshold in each bin. All frequencies that are below some threshold will just be truncated to zero. Okay, and that helps if you have a noisy microphone like I do. You can see even when I'm not talking, uh, actually let me, let me zoom in on this graph a little bit.
So when I'm not talking, there's still quite a bit of noise in this signal. And I could cancel some of that out by raising the threshold. Okay, so, well, if I put it all the way to zero, then it cancels, all sound is being canceled out. Um, but now when I'm quiet, uh, this signal is at zero. And, you know, clapping still makes these big spikes. And that's done per frequency bin. So it could be that even if I'm talking, some other sounds in different frequency ranges are being canceled out. Uh, so that's something you might want to play with. Okay, another parameter that you have here is amplitude normalization. Uh, some papers suggest that every window of audio should be independently amplitude normalized. Um, I personally think that's a terrible idea. I have no idea why you would want to do this. Um, uh, and I can show you why. This, by definition, has the effect of squishing down the peaks in the onset signal and then raising everything that's not a peak. Um, so you can see now when I clap, there is a little spike and then the signal sort of stays high for a while behind the spike. And that's really not good for this algorithm. You really want those spikes to be as clearly defined as possible. Uh, so I would recommend actually just always leaving this off. I, I have no idea why you would want that. Um, so spectral compression gamma. So some papers recommend that every time, in every window, when you calculate the spectrum of the signal, that you should squash down the peaks of the spectrum logarithmically. Okay, and gamma is sort of related to the base of the logarithm that you're using to do that. Okay, so zero means that you're not doing any compression. And if you turn this up, uh, you're sort of, yeah, doing more compression. Um, but for me, this is the same as amplitude normalization. Uh, the effect maybe isn't as strong, but still you can see. So you can see that when I clap, this spike sort of goes up and then trails off slowly rather than just coming right back down. Okay, so filter cutoff. So this onset signal is being filtered with a low pass filter. You can see if it weren't being filtered, it's really, really, really noisy. Okay, so yeah, this signal has a lot of noise in it. How are you supposed to pick an onset out of there? Um, well, in fact, you never really expect your onsets to be occurring more than say 10 or 15 Hertz. So you might as well just filter out anything above 10 hertz. And this actually is still quite responsive to even fast, you know, fast onset. Okay, so as fast as I can play, really, you still get a distinct spike for every onset. Um, as a side note, the order of this filter is something that's specified in the constructor to the class that I wrote. So you specify the order when you create the object and then it's constant for the life of the object. Uh, and by default, I'm using a filter order 15. Okay, now there's this business of onset thresholds. Um, so for tempo tracking and beat tracking, it's enough just to calculate the black line here, the onset signal. Uh, but there are other reasons why I want my software to tell me, to give me a notification at the exact moment when an onset occurs. Um, and just to demonstrate that, I've written a little thing that will click every time uh, I get an onset. So I'll just play that for you.
Okay, and so the way that that works is that it's just based on a threshold. So the red line that I've plotted here is the mean of the onset signal over the past thousand or so samples. And then the blue line is the threshold. And so whenever the leading edge of the black onset signal crosses this blue onset threshold, you get a click. And the threshold is defined as being a certain number of standard deviations above the mean. Okay, so if I, I can put this to be several set standard deviations above the mean. And now if I'm silent, you'll see that the blue line comes very close to the red line. Okay, that's because the standard deviation is small, so the distance between the mean and the threshold is small. And when I talk louder or where there, when there's more signal, um, that blue line goes way, way higher above the red line. Okay, so the threshold goes very high. Okay, so that's pretty good behavior until the standard deviation becomes very close to zero, uh, at which point the threshold gets sort of caught up in the noise of the signal. Okay, so you don't want the threshold to come down too close to the mean. Okay, so there's also this minimum threshold parameter. And this says that when the standard deviation is very small, that the threshold should still be at least this high above the mean. And so if I really zoom in on this, you can see uh, that when I'm quiet, the threshold won't come all the way down to the mean. Okay, and so that just prevents the threshold from falling all the way down into the noise of the onset signal. Okay, so I think that is it for onset detection. Um, stay tuned because I'm gonna have another video on tempo tracking and another video on beat tracking. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say about that for now. So uh, have fun and I'll see you next time.